Hey, what's up, guys? This is uh, Fula with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. Um, yeah, so in this video, man, I just want to give my thoughts about the uh, card that we saw last night, uh, the PBC card. Now, you know, it was, I want to say, a weird night of boxing, so to say. I guess it's, it's not what we expected because of the simple fact that, you know, you know, some of us, including myself, had a um, a, a strong um, and a, I guess you want to say a favorable opinion and expectations on the Charlo brothers to perform, right? And what we got is like we got complete complete opposite, really, of what was expected. Um, we expected them to go in there and destroy, you know, the guys they were fighting. We expected them to, or at least I did, I'm speaking for me. I expected them to go in and just sandblast the dudes they were fighting, man. I didn't expect there to be like any contest really, but you know, that's not boxing all the time, you know. On paper, the guys that they fought, uh, the guys that they that they were masked up against were, you know, subpar guys, or I guess you can say what you want to say, journeymen. But you know what was given was, you know, completely caught a lot of us off guard. You know what I mean? Completely off guard. Now. Granted, they, the Chargos themselves, were kind of uh, responsible for that, that outcome, you know, in one way, but in another way, you can say that bad judging was the response of the outcome as well. So, let's just go ahead and get into it, and what we can take from it. Now, I just want to get first and foremost started on the, um, on the Dominique Brazil card. Honestly, from what I've seen, he needs to stay away from um, all the top heavyweights. He gets sandblasted by Ortiz. He gets sandblasted by Tyson Fury. He gets sandblasted by Anthony Joshua again. Honestly, his best bet is for him to be matched up with like a person like um, Big Baby Miller. Honestly, I think that's who he should go after because that dude, he, he I'm sorry, but he just, he just doesn't have it, bro. He really doesn't. Like, he, he will get like, like, annihilated if he goes up against like a Tyson Fury or a person like that. He is not going to survive. Yeah, I'm going to just tell you why. Now, in that fight with Thomas Negron, or, or, or excuse me, Carlos Negron, but in that fight, man, he was getting outboxed. I mean, even Carlos Negron, he switched to Southpaw one, had him confused, had him swinging at the air, had that dude really looking out of place, out of sorts, basically. The only thing that saved him was a haymaker. That haymaker saved him, and that was all she wrote. But, you know, a haymaker is not going to happen all the time, man. Seriously, like... That's not going to be the case. So, for him to just, like, rely on that, you know, it's going to be a problem for him. He's going to he's gonna find some stuff out, man. So, with that being said, he needs to just try to get a big baby Miller fight. Now, let's get to this fight, which caused controversy. 
the Tony Harrison Jermel Charlo fight. Now, indeed, there were some things that Jermel Charlo could have done better. Jermel Charlo, he could have stopped loading up on shots. He could have stopped looking for the haymaker. What he should have did is he should have just got in there, boxed him, and got out and controlled the distance a little bit better, gauged the distance a little bit better. And I think that's what caused Tony Harrison to have a little bit, not too much. He didn't have a lot. I mean, but Tony Harrison measured the distance, kind of got off a couple of shots, like basically was pot shotting. And that's what enabled him to get a couple of hits in. But I would not say um, a lot of hits. Now, as far as effective aggression, you can give that to Jamel. He was a lion in there. That dude was looking for the knockout. That dude was looking to put it into him. You know what I mean? He, he was looking to get him out of there. I think he was thinking that he got knocked out before, so he wanted to just uh, continue to do that. But, you know, that doesn't work all the time. So, what happened is, you know, he had him hurt multiple times in the fight. You know, he was hurt. Tony Harrison was, you know, sometimes it looked like he was on the brink of being stopped in the fight a couple of times, right? But then, all of a sudden, when the decision comes, Tony Harrison is winning. Tony Harrison got the win. And the crazy thing about that is one of the scorecards was so wide. 117 to 111, like, come on now, man. Where do you get these scores at? I mean, this is crazy. You know, this was a crazy score. Honestly, this fight reminds me of when Eris Landy Lara fight, fought Paul Williams. Eris Landy Lara won that fight completely. It was no question about it. I mean... Paul Williams, they were on the verge of stopping the fight because Paul Williams was taking so much damage. But they gave the fight to Paul Williams. All the judges did. I would have even accepted a split decision if you had to give one. You know, I would have even accepted that more. But a unanimous decision in favor of Tony Harrison? Definitely not. That was not the case. You know, he, he had spurts where he was effective okay but he didn't for me he did not do enough to get the decision no way jose um now let's go on to the uh uh corboro fight or corobo whatever his name is corobo um and charlo fight jamal charlo now in that fight i will say that you know, Jamal Charlo, what he did better than what he, uh, his brother did was he adjusted. You know, he, he adjusted because he saw that he was getting hit with a straight left. But he adjusted and was able to come back with some big shots himself. Um, and in the 12th round, he almost had him out of there. You know, it was, he, he backed him up. He hit him with something that kind of like just rocked him. And he had to hold on. But Cor Korvorov or Korvorov, whatever his name is. I think it's Korvorov, I don't know. Uh, Korvorov. He, um, he was not like a like a pushover, man. I mean, I'll say that. He, he, uh, he, was, he, was, he was game, man. That's all I have to say. He was game and... Um, you know, I would, to be honest with you, I would not be um, mad if they called the fight a draw. You know, I would not be mad at that at all because he was game. You know, he he was a, you know, he had some tools that, you know, that that being a veteran will provide you. You know, um, he did 
he did some things, had some successes, um, was slipping punches, was not like, you know, trying to get hit, didn't use his head as defense. I mean, he did a couple, a lot of things right, you know. Sometimes he beat Jamal to the counter. Now, um, with that being said, the fact that Jamal could adjust and have success later on shows that what his mental fortitude is like. Now, granted, um, could, it, could his mental fortitude have been better? Yes, absolutely, you know, but considering that his brother lost earlier, um, you know, shout out to Ronnie Shield for kind of like sitting him down and talking to him and making him, um, like, making, making sure he was like just still focused on what he had to do, you know, despite his brother losing. I got to say, man, it was, um, it was good, you know. It wasn't a pretty fight, you know. Don't don't get me wrong. It was not a pretty fight. Okay, it was a it was an ugly fight, you know. But still, at the same time, he 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 asked it out. The the scorecard was too wide for in favor of him. But if I had to choose, he asked it out, and or a draw is um, a draw a draw is appropriate, you know. So, what do I think is next for them? I think Jamel Charlo, he should bounce back. I think he should, like, look, look inside himself and um, see what he can improve upon in order to leave it uh, not up to the judges. You know, because I think what was happening is, you know, boxing is like, uh, I want to say boxing is kind of like a dance, you know. Sometimes... Or boxing is kind of like like making a beat because sometimes there's parts where you slow it down and there's times where you speed up the tempo. I think with Jamel, what happened is, you know, the tempo was off. His tempo was off. He was off beat basically because he was trying to force the tempo too much and, you know, it ended up kind of leaving him vulnerable in certain points of the fight, but not at enough points to just call it for Tony Harrison. Definitely not. Definitely not. You know, um, and, and Jamal Charlo, he kind of was uh, better on tempo, you know, as the fight progressed. Now, um, I think Jamal Charlo should bounce back, man. I think, you know, uh, I don't know if he's going to get an instant rematch because of all the particulars in boxing. I really doubt it. You know, that's just what it is. I would like to see an instant rematch. You know, that, that would be ideal. But I don't think they're going to do it. Um, I think maybe he should start off with, like, fighting another, like, um, another contender. Like, another... Uh, um, 154 pounder I'm trying to think of some names right now that may be a good like comeback fight for him at 154 pounds um, I, I can't really think of any right now um, maybe he can get the winner of Brian Castano and Erislan Di Lara we'll see what happens with that um, and as far as as far as Jamal Charlo is concerned, you know, styles make fights, man. That's all I'm going to say. Styles make fights. Um, this guy was just game. Me personally, though, I think he can still, I think Jamal Charlo still whoops Canelo. I think he still beats the brakes off of Canelo. I'm going to tell you why. That guy that Jamal Charlo fought had better footwork than Canelo, to be honest with you. He moved around a lot more than a Canelo would. Canelo basically stays planted and just unbows. That's what he does, you know, and moves his upper body to slip punches, you know. And, you know, I think, honestly, that would be an advantage to Jamal Charlo because of the simple fact that, you know, if Canelo would try to box, Jamal Charlo with his limp will beat him to the punch. You know, mind you, that guy, uh, Korobov, had more length, you know, 
than Canelo had has. And so I still got Jamal Charlo um, beating Canelo, man. Because, I mean, as I said before, Canelo is not as tall as uh, Corobo. Um, you know, um, Canelo does not have as good as footwork as Corobo. I'm just being real with you. All Canelo has maybe over Corobo is the fact that he's a, he's, he's a, um, I guess you can say the money, the money fight, you know, the money fight. I, I will give him hand speed. I guess you can give him that. And I guess you can say that, you know, he has, um, he has a little bit of better counter punching ability and he can move his upper body better. But I would give, I mean, as far as length and as far as footwork and moving around the ring, Canelo doesn't do that, you know? He really doesn't really do that that well, man. Like, sorry to say it, but Canelo, when, when you see him fight, it looks like, a dude who has uh, cement blocks on his shoes, you know, and Jamal Charlo has way better footwork than Canelo, man. So I, I, I would say he give if Jamal Charlo decided to outbox Canelo, he would outbox him. But in order to get the decision, he would have to stop him. So um, I, I can see him stopping him. You know, I don't see it being an a issue him stopping him. Now, um, as far as next fights. I know Triple G's still not going to fight him, you know, even based off of uh, tonight, last night's performance, Triple G's not going to fight him. So we just have to wait and see. Um, he, I, I personally think he's still ready for a big name, you know, because you got to look at fighters of the past, you know. Um, for example, I'll use the example, Zab Judah, you know, Z Zab Judah, you know, he got he got upset by Carlos Baldemir, right? But when J Zab Judah fought Floyd Mayweather, those first six rounds, man, Zab was giving all Flo giving it to Floyd, giving Floyd all he could handle, basically. You know, so um, I mean, even dropped Floyd. You know, he hit him with something and dropped him, dude. So what I'm saying is, you know, we, you know, just because one performance doesn't look as good as another one, doesn't mean that the dog ain't in there, man. That the lion ain't uh, in the guy, man. So let's just wait and see what happens. That's all I got for now, guys. Leave your thoughts. Leave, leave your comments. Let me know what you think the Charlos should do next. Let me know what you think the next moves are. Let me know if you think Jamel is going to bounce back and get on there to the top. Let me know if you think Jamal is ready for the big fights. I'm off until the next one, guys.